Genesis 20, 26, verse 22. And he departed from there and did another work. There they strove not. And he called it Rehoboth. For this because there is no uh, he says for now, yes, for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. Let's take that again. Genesis 26 verse 22. And he removed from thence, from thence and, and did, did another well. And, and for that, for that they strove not. not. And, and he said, and he called it real what? Huh? And he said, and he said for now, now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. That was Isaac. They left the place where they were striving. They called that place Isok. Contention. He moved from there. He went to another one that sounded like Satan. That was Satan. That one is more of hatred. He left that place again and did another one. And for this one, they strove not. And it named that well Rehoboth. For he said, The Lord has made room for us. For now, we shall flourish or be fruitful in the land. So you can see, if he has not left the place of contention, if he has not left the place of hatred, he will not have moved on to a place of real yeah. So what we are saying in effect is if you don't move away from fighting, from people that confront you and hate you, you will never get to your place of enlargement. Hallelujah. Amen. Real world means enlargement. So just trace your own path. Those people you have left behind, those conditions you have left behind, people contending with you, confrontation, fighting, the things you did not do, they said you did it. Hatred. You cannot fight back. Isaac did not fight them. I think Isaac did what? Departed from them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. As we hold your word, give us understanding. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 14, verse 29. Matthew chapter 14, verse 29. I'm going to be very fast. And he said, Come. Because Peter saw Jesus as a spirit walking on water. He thought it was a spirit. But it was actually Jesus walking on the water. And Jesus reassured him. Peter asked, If it is you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, Come. Verse 29. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Verse 30. But when he saw the wind, boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. Verse 31. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Says, O you of little faith, why did you doubt. To doubt is to slide back in faith. To doubt is not to believe that God can save you in your trouble. All you of 
made you faint? Why did you doubt? The problem of little faith, brothers and sisters, is you don't know you have it until faith, your faith fails you from sinking. The problem of little faith is you don't know you have it until your faith fails to stop you from sinking. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Look at that text. And when Peter, that connotes a time frame. And when Peter, there was a point in time, Peter walked on water to go to Jesus. But at another time, Peter walked on water, but he began to sink. He says, and when Peter, that is the time Peter walked on the water to go to Jesus. He said, Peter walked on the water to go to Jesus. So Peter couldn't have walked if he had not prior decided the direction to go. Amen? He had the direction. In whose direction? Jesus. Every time you make up your mind in the direction to go, you will advance. But the problem is, how far will you go? How far you go is talking about in whose direction you are in. Look at Peter. He could not walk on water until when he decided to go to Jesus. True? Peter walked on water because he has decided the direction to go. But when he saw, look at somebody that was walking on the water. Did Peter walk on water? Yes or no? But when he saw, that's another time. There was a time he walked. But look at it. But when he saw, what did he see? The wind burst us. He was afraid. He was not afraid when he walked on the water, was he? But when he saw the wind burst us, he was afraid. Something led to the fear. Fear is the result of your lack of focus. From God. Fear is the result of your lack of focus from God. Every time you decide to honor God, you will make progress. But when you decide to accommodate other things, your progress will stop. Did you get that? Fear comes when you have little faith or no faith in God. Fear comes when you have little faith or no faith in God. What does fear bring? Look at verse 30. But when he saw the wind, Pastors, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Fear begins to sink in. Was he not the one that walked on water some few minutes ago? How come somebody that was doing fine a short while now begins to do woefully? We need to find out. When he decided to go in Jesus' direction, he walked on water. And as he was walking on water, he saw the wind burst us. And then, beginning to sink, he immediately. Cried. Did he take time? No. Immediately. Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. The question is, how did he catch him if Peter was not within his reach? 
things that who was within the reach of Jesus, how come somebody that was within the reach of Jesus began to sin? He was within the reach of Jesus, and yet he began to sin. Doesn't that trust? I mean, put put a question in you. How come somebody that was within the reach of Jesus, who was walking on water a few a, a, a while ago, now begin to sink? If not, that person took his focus away from God. Today's title is the Lord is present. Because he that was within the reach of Jesus. Jesus was present with Peter. That was why Peter walked on water. How come despite the presence of God that was with Peter, Peter also began to sink? He took off his focus away from God. Every time you took your focus away from God, you will sink. It's not that God is not there. God is there, but you will, you will, you make yourself Take your focus away from God. And that is the cause of the downfall. Amen? Amen. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, the second part of verse 5, For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. How many people believe that? Who said that? God. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. But I beg to disagree. Many people don't believe the word of God. They come to church, but they don't believe. And how do I know they don't believe? Because the next thing they do, their action betray their belief. Look at verse 6. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear. Fear cannot be there when the faith is there. Fear is absent where faith is present. It is not possible for fear to be in the house and for faith to be in the house and fear also be there. Did you hear that? So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper and I will not fear. If the Lord is present, there is no need to be, to be afraid. If you believe the Lord is present, you will not fear. You fear because you do not believe the Lord is present. And the only way fear can be removed is by faith in the word of God. Peter walked on the water because he had faith to go to Jesus. Did you get that? He walked on water because he had faith to go to Jesus. A little while before that verse, he was afraid because he thought he was seeing a spirit walking on water. But with a little word of reassurance from Jesus, he was encouraged. Peter walked on water to go to Jesus because he had faith in God that the Lord is present. But when his faith was compromised, everyone say compromise. Every time your faith becomes compromised, fear will come in and you will begin. Your faith becomes compromised when you no longer believe that God's word is working for you. What you do every day matters more than what you do sometimes. And that's a problem with many Christians. What you don't do cannot answer for you. What you do sometimes cannot give you the same result if you do it all the time. True of us. Answer me true of us. And that is the answer to some of our problem or our question. What you do every day matters more than what you do sometimes. If you don't believe the word of God every day, it will be difficult for you to believe it on other days. Faith 
in God is not part time. It is a lifetime. And that is the reason why many Christians have a problem that is too big for them to handle. Why? Because they only put on faith when the problem comes. Faith is not part time. It is a lifetime. Hallelujah. Someone said, knowing the Bible is not the same as knowing the author of the Bible. What am I saying in short? Relationship. Pastor is reminding you to study the Bible, to, to, to memorize the scripture. It's for yourself. He says, study to show yourself approved of God. A workman that rightly divided the word of truth and not ashamed. You see? So when you study the word of God, shame will be far from you. So Peter, who walked on water a little while ago, when he took his focus away from God, what happened? Fear came and began to see. If you don't lose sight of God out of trouble, in trouble, you will still see him. Why? Because he has said, I will not leave you, nor forsake you. The Lord is present. The story was told of a man with a successful publishing business. And within one year, his business crushed. His wealth disappeared, and this man became depressed. And guess what? He began to abuse alcohol. Even his family left him as a result. And at this, at this lowest ebb of his life, he was homeless, he, was, he became a destitute, and he was broken. But as God would have it, it was during this lowest point of his life that he turned to God. Richard Lomil later wrote a book about his life. Listen, God does not change your condition unless He changes your heart. When Peter began to sin, he realized his condition was precarious. And so what did he do? He cried out to God. The God that was not far from him. The God that has always been present only that Peter lose sight of God. He cried out to God. And the scripture said, immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught Peter. That suggests to us that the Lord has always been present with Peter. Because Peter was within the reach of Jesus, it was easy for Jesus to quickly catch Peter from sinking. Psalm 94 Verse 7. Psalm 94, verse 7. Yes, they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. That is the word of Hebrew people. The fact that God does not see what they do outside the church. God sees everything. He sees evil into your heart when you are in the room. Look at verse 9. He that planted the hair. Who? Who planted the earth? He that planted the earth, shall he not hear? <laughs> and he that formed the heart, who formed the heart? God, shall he not see? It is impossible for he that planted the earth not to hear what you say. It is impossible for him that formed your heart not to see what you are going through. But why don't we know that God is there with us? It's because you don't believe that he's there. Somebody asked, why don't I do what God said I should do, even though I love Him? If you really love Him, you will do it. The reason why you are not doing what God says is because you don't love Him. I don't believe Him. He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? He that formed the earth, shall he not see? Just because nothing happened when you sinned, you may think you got away with it. Unless you hold up to the sin. It lies at the door of your heart. It will expose you. 
unless you expose it. So God is calling all sinners to repentance. No matter how low we fall or how high we rise, we cannot go below God. Neither can we go above God. David said in Psalm 23 verse 4, as I begin to tell you, Psalm 23 verse 4 shall be our memory verse. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Psalm 23 verse 4. Unless you know the author of the Bible, how else can he comfort you even in the valley of the shadow of death? The shadow of death is not your destination. Amen? Amen. Amen. That valley of the shadow of death is not your destination. He said, though I walk through, is the transit. James chapter 5, verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Affliction comes from the devil. Persecution comes from the people. Is anybody afflicted? Affliction and oppression is from the devil. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing what? Doing good and healing all that were oppressed of who? Of the devil. For God was with him. Oppression and affliction comes from the devil. And it's by anointing the presence of God that we can remove them. If the Lord is present with you, he will heal you of oppressions. If the Lord is present with you, he will heal you of your afflictions. Is any afflicted? Is a question. What should we do? Let them pray. Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. When you are not afflicted, when you are not in trouble, when you are merriment, that is the time to sing songs. Verse 14 of James. Is any sick among you? People fall in, fall in and out of sickness. The poor man cried unto the Lord, and he heard him, and delivered him out of all his troubles. This one shall pass away. Amen. So let him call for the elders of the church. Because he knows he has put leaders in the church. He knows what they will do for you. This is not a time to be playing anky panky with God. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Everyone say pray. Amen. If prayer doesn't work, God will not ask your leader to pray for you. Let him call for the elders of the church. The church that you belong and let them pray over him. And what happens? Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Everybody say, everybody say save the sick. Save the, the sick. The sick has to be saved. It is the power of God that he has given to the elders of the church. That's why it is important for you to identify with a church. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. In other words, just as what happened to our pastor here, God raised them up. And what happened to some of us already? God raised them up. You don't belong here. Hallelujah. And raised him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. The important is that there are some sickness that are attributable 
to sin. There are some sickness that come as a result of sin. Remember that man in John chapter 9, the one that was born blind? Remember they came to Jesus and said, Who sinned that this man was born blind? Was it his own sin or his parents' sin? Remember? So there are some sickness that as a result of sin. But you will know. God will tell you. So you don't have to be walking with sin consciousness. No. Why must you continue to walk in the sin consciousness? If you are sin, stop sinning. Hallelujah. Because you cannot be born again and be sinning. The seed of God does not sin. He that is born of God cannot sin. Cannot sin. Does not sin. Because the seed of God is in him. Hallelujah. Amen. The present. The Lord is present. I want us to quickly round up now. Aside. Identify. Anyone that is here that you have sickness in your body, I would like you to come out. If the word of God is real, why don't we challenge the word of God? But you see, don't just come out, you must look at your life. Does can the word of God really help me? Do I have faith to believe that God can heal this problem? And whatever happens right now, I will take it as the finale. Because God has spoken. Let's look at that scripture. Is any sin among you? You answer if you are sick. Sickness of your body. Sickness of somebody you know. Sickness of finances. Sickness of business, mental sickness, bodily sickness, whatever the name is, anybody sick among you. Every time you study the scripture, he's talking to you. That's why you use the word you. So don't pretend and say it's not for me. If it's for you, identify with it. How many people touch Jesus Christ? When Jesus Christ came to that city, a lot of people taught Jesus. How come it was only the woman with 12 that yes. taught him that was healed? A lot of people came, they do not know what they came for. This woman has said, what she has said, if I can touch the heavens, that I am your own. Faith. Faith without works is dead. Whenever you pray for something by faith, stop asking for it again. Be thanking God. Say it in another way that will remind God of His promises. God give me money. God give me money. God. Every day, God give me money, give me money. God will say, I won't I had you. What else can you ask? Why will you not believe that I've given you money? So thank you, Lord, for giving me money. Thank you, Lord, for giving me money. Even though as you are thanking God, you are reminding me. Hallelujah. You, have, you must demonstrate faith. God healed me. God healed me. God healed me for 30 days. Is the hair of God deaf that he cannot hear you? Is the hand of God short that he cannot save you? How long did it take Jesus to catch Peter? Immediately. So the Lord is within our reach now. I mean, we are in the, within the reach of Jesus. If the Lord is not far from us, that's what we call him Emmanuel. Which means what? The Lord is here. If the Lord is here, why do you think He's not there? Sin will take God away from you. So if you are a sinner, you stop sinning with your own hands. Serve this God. Say, if God be God, serve Him. <laughs> if it is bad, then. Bad. But if God is God, serve Him. Do whatever He says you should do. And let's see what will, what, what, what will happen. With every head bowed there, with every high schools, the word of God cannot be difficult to understand, especially when the Holy Spirit is present. Is any sin among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sin. And the Lord shall raise him up. 
And if he has committed sin, he shall be forgiven. So, Father, I pray over this bottle so all in the name of Jesus that your people are brought. Jehovah said that the reason of the anointing, every yoke shall be destroyed. Jehovah, I come, command the power of God to go into this bottles of God and sanctify this oil, virgin oil, holy oil. I sanctify them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let every prayer meet, every prayer request that your people henceforth shall pray for and use this oil to anoint it. Let that prayer request be answered. Amen. Whatever is done and prayed for by faith in total obedience to God, Jehovah, and they are not with this oil. Lord, answer for them. Amen. The prayer of faith shall heal the sick. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sin, he shall be forgiven. Whoever among you that is here that wants to be prayed for, you come out. But make sure you are one with God. Very important. So if we say we have not sinned, the truth is not in us. And we lie. We deceive ourselves. But if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and remove us from every unrighteousness. But if we say we have not sinned, we are making him a liar, and his word is not in us. So, before you come out, please, make it up with God. We believe the word of God in this church. It doesn't need to be added to, it doesn't need to be removed. We say it the way God said. Let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Is anybody afflicted? Is anybody sick among you? Is anybody afflicted? Let him pray. Is anybody sick among you? Let him call for the elders. Let them pray over him. He said, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Please. I want to anoint you with oil in the name of Jesus Christ, the healer. He said, in my name, you shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. If I pray for you now, the power of God will come upon you. Please, let the power of God abide with you. Don't go elder skelter. Let the power of God stay with you. We cannot plant a seed and remove it tomorrow and still expect an harvest. But we plant a seed. We retain it there. We water it in hope, in patience, in faith, and it brings forth fruit. If anyone hear this word, I will liken it to a seed that is planted on a good soil. Anyone that hears this word of God is like that seed that is planted in a good heart will receive the word of God, retain it and with patience and perseverance, it brings forth harvest. Some of the time for 64, 94. Father, we thank you. We stand by the authority of your word in the name of Jesus. Every form of affliction over your daughter, 
Lord Jehovah, whatever connection, whatever access for any health care, Jehovah, any medical emergency, whatever symptoms and signs that have been planted against your daughter, Lord, according to your word, is anybody sick, let him pray. Is anybody affected? Let him call upon the elders of the church and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall heal the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sin, it shall be forgiven. Therefore, Lord, let your word come to pass in your daughter's life. Lord Jehovah, whatever sickness or disease, whatever medical challenge or challenges, Lord, that have been afflicting your daughter, in the name of Jesus, affliction stop. Father, let oppression stop. In the name of Jesus, I commit it to your, it to your hand right now. Father, your daughter, and I pray for her from the crown of her head to the toes of her feet. Jehovah, heal your daughter, raise your daughter up. Let a fiction not come a second time. Jehovah, thank you. Because by the authority of your word we stand. We command healing into this body. I speak healing into your body. In the name of Jesus. You are healed, Jesus. I pray for your daughter in the name of Jesus. Lord said, is anybody sick among you? Let him pray. Is anybody afflicted? Let him call upon the elders of the church and let them anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And if she has sinned, it shall be, it shall be forgiven her. And the Lord shall raise her up. Jehovah. Every form of affliction, every form of sickness, every form of oppression in this body, from the head to the toes, Jehovah, let the power that heal the sick, let the power that raise the sick up from the sickness, let the power of the Lord flow into this body right now, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every affliction. I rebuke every oppression. I rebuke every sickness. I rebuke every disease. I rebuke every form of attack from the enemy. In the name of Jesus, be all. Jehovah, heal your daughter. Forgive your daughter. Restore your daughter. Let our destiny not be corrupted. Jehovah, let our destiny, O oh God, be within reach. In the name of Jesus. So shall we be in Jesus. Jehovah, I commit your daughter into your hand. In the name of Jesus. Is anybody sick among you? Let him pray. Is anybody afflicted among you? Let him call upon the elders of the church. And anointed him with oil in the name of the Lord, and he shall be healed, and healed and raised up by the Lord. And if he has sinned, he shall be forgiven. Jehovah, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your daughter. Knowing fully well, O oh God, that she has made herself one with you. Therefore, Lord, is anything too hard for the Lord? Jehovah. From the crown of her head to the toes of her feet, affliction be gone, oppression be gone. In the name of Jesus, whatever runs in family shall be far from you. Jehovah, heal your daughter, raise your daughter up, O God, and forgive her sin. Jehovah, permanently, O God, let affliction not come a second time. Jehovah, humble your word. In the name of Jesus, 
So whoever comes to you, you will not cast away. We come to you on your on the behalf of your daughter. Heal now, O God, in the name of Jesus. You are healed in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, say, is anybody sick among God? Let him pray. Is anybody afflicted? Let him call upon the elders of the church and anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. He shall be healed and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has, if he has committed sin, he shall be forgiven him. Jehovah, confirm your word in the life of your daughter. Whatever it is of God, you know, shall he that planted the air not hear? Shall he that formed the eye not see? Jehovah, there's nothing you don't hear and there's nothing you don't see. Jehovah, I pray for your daughter in the name of Jesus. Let every affliction be gone. Let every oppression be gone. Who is he that said a thing when the Lord has not commanded it? Say, in my name you shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Jehovah, let every form of affliction and sickness, every form of oh God of disease, every form of oh God of health care in your daughter's life, wherever door that has been open for them, let that door be shut. Let every stranger get out of this body in the name of Jesus. For you shall not die, but you shall live to declare the glory of God. Believe it, that's what the Lord says. You shall not die, but you shall live to declare the glory of God. Repeat after me. I shall not die. I shall live to declare the glory of God. I shall not die. I shall live to declare the glory of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' name. Let's stand up as we worship God together. Just raise up your hand to heaven. Thank you. Raise up your hand to heaven and just give him a wave. We have to believe him. We have to believe him. You have to believe him. Affliction, Nahum chapter 1, verse 9. Affliction shall not come a second time. You have to leave this place today and begin to tell yourself affliction shall not come a second time. Affliction shall not come a second time. I shall live and not die to declare the glory of God. I am healed. I am delivered through the power of God. Every sickness and disease, every malignancy, every cancer, every malady in my body, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out because I am healed in the name of Jesus. My finances is healed. My marriage is healed. My health is healed. Every disease around your family today, it, my body is a no-go area because I am delivered in the name of Jesus. I am delivered in the name of Jesus. Speak over that person. Speak over that woman. Speak over that son. Speak over that man. Speak over their career. Speak over their job. Speak over their health. Whatever area of challenges, in the name of Jesus, Lord, heal it, O God. Heal your people. Heal your church. Heal their lives, O God. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And so, Father, we thank you. Thank you for sending forth your word. The Lord is present. Thank you, Lord, for healing your people. Lord, is there anything too hard for you to do? Jehovah, if we believe that with God, nothing shall be impossible. 
If we believe, oh God, that with God, nothing is too hard for you to do. If we believe, oh God, that you send forth your word to heal the sick and deliver them from their destruction. Not today. Let your will be done in our lives. Amen. Let your will be done in our joy. Amen. Let your will be done in our finances. Amen. Let your will be done in our health. Amen. Let your will be done in our marriage. Amen. Let your will be done in our career. coming to pass when the Lord has not commanded it. Whatever you have spoken, Lord, we are in agreement with it. In the name of Jesus, Amen. affliction shall not come a second time. Amen. Affliction shall not come a second time. Amen. Lord, give your people a heart to believe. Affliction shall not come a second time. Amen. Affliction shall not come a second time. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will not lose your life and you will not lose your hope. Amen. You will not lose your health. Amen. You will not lose your destiny. Just the same today, oh my. 